Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. It's already October, so that could mean only one thing for the channel, and that means that it's time to film some Halloween videos. Now today is a makeup tutorial for a character that means so much to me, and that is Sailor Neptune from Sailor Moon. I especially wanted to do a Sailor Neptune tutorial because this year they are finally releasing the next installment in the Sailor Moon Crystal series, and it is a movie. It's supposed to be out in January 2021, but the possibility always stands that it could be delayed yet again. But after five years of waiting, it really is exciting to finally get another installment in Sailor Moon Crystal. And Sailor Neptune particularly has a very sentimental meaning for me, which I'm going to go into in the tutorial itself. Now, although I have my violin with me and I have been playing since I was eight years old, which, oh my God, is so long ago. I really don't feel prepared to play anything for you today. However, if I get enough comments saying, hey, you should really perform a little bit, then I will do a special song. But considering that my Halloween videos are already so deeply involved, there's so much preparation just in the preparation of the makeup and the wig and the costume. You'll see in the next video as well that I made this more than just a makeup tutorial. But if you did want me to play a little something on here, let me know and then I can practice a little bit more. Unfortunately, I am very, very under practiced at the moment, but I really did find it important to at least use my violin as a prop. Now, without any further ado, let's dive into the tutorial. We're gonna start with our eyes already primed and with a layer of foundation added. And then I'm going to go forward with concealer. Now today I'm using the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. The shade that I use is number 12S Fair, but you can use whichever shade goes best with your skin. In this step, I'm going to start by covering any blemishes or dark spots. As of right now, because of the amount of time that I'm actually wearing a mask, I get breakouts now in the areas that I wear them. Now, the protection that I get from the mask is far more important than any acne that I may get, so I'm just going to go ahead and take this time and cover that up. In my case, the coverage isn't going to be perfect, but I'm going to do what I can with the resources that I have. Now that the spots are mostly concealed, I'm going to go forward with the under eye area. And I'm using the Eco Tools Beauty Sponge for this step. Now I find that when doing under eye coverage, really less is more. The more concealer you put on, the more likely it is that you're going to get creasing under your eyes. I'm also going to go ahead and put a small spot right on the cheekbone to highlight. We'll meet again. Now, if I wasn't doing costume makeup, I'd probably end up skipping this step or doing concealer afterward, which is something that you can absolutely choose to do. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer of powder right underneath the eye so that if I get fallout during the eyeshadow stage, I can simply brush it right off. The powder that I'm using is the MAC Set Powder in the shade Invisible. Now what I do is I put the product on the pan first, dip my beauty sponge into it, and then swipe it right underneath the eyes. For Sailor Neptune, she has a heavy teal, blue, and green color palette. Now, a few years ago when I first did the costume, I did a few makeup tests just to see if a teal color palette would go with the eyes, but I felt that those colors were sort of drowned out by the remaining teal color palette that she had. So instead, what I go for for Sailor Neptune is kind of on the opposite end of the color spectrum, which are pinks. After watching her transformation sequence a few times and seeing the beautiful emphasis on the pink lip gloss that she wears, I really went for those pinks. Now, the palette that I'm using is the Melt Cosmetics Millennial Pinks palette. It is a gorgeous palette, but it is a bit expensive. Now, if you want to replicate this look at home, but you don't want to spend a lot of money on a Melt Cosmetics palette, you can absolutely replicate this as long as you have four colors, a light to medium pink, a deeper shade of pink or brown even would look really nice with this, a pink shimmer shade, and a highlighting tone. So for step one, I'm dipping into that medium pink tone in the palette called Flamingo Dream with a fluffy brush. This brush is the Sigma E40 blending brush. Now I'm going to use this tone as a base slash transition shade. And what I'm going to do is apply the color from the bottom of my eyelid to about three quarters of the way up to the brow, ending at just below the brow bone. Now don't be afraid to get a little bit messy with this step. We're going to clean it up later as the process continues. It's funny because I have a light on behind me. This video looks so much darker than my other ones, but I really kind of wanted that pink effect for this video. 
Now for the next step, I'm going in with the shimmer shade called Mixed Motions. Now for this step, you're going to want to wet your brush to get the maximum amount of shimmer. And to do that, I'm using the MAC Fix Plus Gold Light, although you can go ahead and just use water or any setting spray that you happen to have. I happen to really like this one because it already has flecks of shimmers in it, so you get the maximum amount of shininess from your eyeshadow. I'm going to put it in with a packing brush. This one is the Bodyography Pro Flat Shader Brush. For this stage, I'm going to apply the shadow over about three quarters of my lid, stopping just about at the eye socket level. I love doing my eyeshadow this way because it cuts out the hassle of doing a cut crease with concealer, and the base coat helps me personally because I have very oily eyelids. The rest of my face is dry, but my eyelids for some reason have the most amount of oil on my face, so it can really destroy some of the eye looks that I create, so making sure that I prime and then add a base coat underneath it really protects the color over time. Now I'm going to go in with a bonus step. Now you don't have to do this step at home, but if you happen to have a lighter pink, this will really make the shimmers pop. In the Millennial Pinks palette, I'm going to go in with the lightest pink color called Pink Noise. Now this is a color that looks white, but it has a pink duochrome inside of it. And I'm going to apply it to the center of my eyelid. Now you can blend this out either using your finger or a small fluffy brush. And for the next part, I'm going in with the small fluffy brush that I just used, the Morphe M506, to add the deepest shade to the outer corner of the eye. And the deepest shade in this palette is called Modern Love, and it's a very deep, almost reddish pink. Now finally, I'm going to blend that all in with the first fluffy brush that we used. I'm going to dip into that medium pink shade Flamingo Dream just one more time and blend it all in together. Now the next step is to basically replicate these same colors on the bottom lash. Now first I'll go in with the same fluffy brush, the Sigma E40, and apply it to the lower lash line. You can always go in with a smaller fluffy brush if you want, but I love the dramatic look that you can get by using a big fluffy brush on your lower lash line. Now for the next step, I'm going to use the same packing brush that I used for my lids. I'll first wipe it off on a clean paper towel that I have right below me, and then add the shimmer shades to the inner corner and into the middle of the eye. I'm starting with the medium pink shimmer shade called Mixed Emotions. And with shimmers on the lower part of your lashes, a little goes a long way. You don't even have to do this step, but I really like the dramatic effect, and I am a fan of the way that shimmer shades look when they cling to your lower lashes. Now for the next step, I'm going to dip into that very light shade called Pink Noise. Again, this step is completely optional, but I'm going to apply it to the very center of the bottom part of my lashes just to make the look really pop. Now for the final step of the lower lashes, I'm going in with a Sigma Flat Definer brush. This one's called the E15 for the outer corner of the lower part of my lash line. I'm going in with that shade called Modern Love, which is the deepest pink shade. Now, since I made very thin lines on my lower lash line, I'm actually going to blend that in with a smaller fluffy brush, the Morphe M506. Now because I'm going to wear false lashes, I'm actually going to add a very thin line of eyeliner so that there's no gaps between my lash line and the false lashes that I'm going to use. The brand that I'm using right now is the Glossier Pro Tip Eyeliner in the shade Black. Now you could easily go with a much more dramatic eyeliner look, but I think that the false lashes and the eyeshadow will speak for itself when it's all done. Next step will be to go in with a layer of mascara. I'm using the Butter London Double Decker Lashes Mascara. This will be a thin layer because I'm going to add another one once the false lashes are applied. Now the next step will be to put on some false lashes. These are by Coco Lashes and they are in the style Teats. Now a necessary evil with any false lashes will be using lash glue. 
I know that they have magnetic lashes now, but I haven't figured that out yet, so I'm going in with the tried and true duo lash glue, which you can get basically at any drugstore. Now, this always takes a moment to get tacky, so I'm gonna do a few things while we wait for it to be ready to be applied. Now, what I like to do is apply the glue to the pan like so, and because these lashes happen to be brand new, I'm going to clip them while I wait for it to dry. One challenge that I have doing anime costumes is that my eyes are actually really small, unlike the characters that sometimes I want to dress up as. However, these lashes are made quite big, probably to accommodate people with larger eyes. Now that doesn't quite work for me, so what I will do is I will just clip the tail. And as the glue is still drying, I'm going to go in and do my eyebrows. Now Sailor Neptune has a sort of marine blue green or teal hair. So it's pretty important to match the eyebrows. You can go in with any shade that matches the wig that you chose because her hair color changes depending on which episode of the anime or the manga that you're dealing with. So there's a lot of creative license that you can take, which is really nice. I really see her hair as being like a deep blue green. That's my favorite shade from her. And for the eyebrows, I'm actually going in with an eyeliner pencil. This one is the Sephora Waterproof Contour Eye Pencil in the shade Surfer Babe. Unfortunately, I believe that they phased the shade out, but it was so beautiful. But this shade's very old, so I'm gonna go ahead and use it on my eyebrows. However, I'm not going to ever go back and put it on my waterline. I actually have a different shade now. It's not going to be quite the same as this one, but it will do. So dark. That's so dark. Oh my god. So I gotta say, with this shade, less is more. It's so dark. It's darker than I thought it would be, but I will make it work, I promise. Now I'm going to go ahead and diffuse that a bit. I have a NYX Micro Brow Pencil. They're one of my favorite brands for brows even to this day, even though it's seen now as a much older brand. But what I love about the Micro Brow Pencil is that it has this little spoolie on the other side. Now that lash glue is definitely ready by now. I'm going to go in and apply them with a pair of tweezers. And what I do is I take the glue that is now tacky and I dip it into the glue, making sure that the most product is on the corner of the lashes. Now, although this glue is white now, it will dry down clear. And that's another one of the reasons why I like to put in a very thin layer of eyeliner there, just so that if there is a gap, it's okay, you won't see it, there's a layer of black. And along with the rest of the face, because I don't have to concentrate as much as I did while I was doing my eyes, I'm actually going to talk a little bit about why this character is so important to me. Now for this video, you may think, why not go with Sailor Moon? She's a much more popular character, she's the title character of the show, and although I really, really love Usagi, I'm wearing a shirt with her face on it right now, and if Sailor Neptune and Sailor Moon had a baby, I feel like that's kind of my personality. But I think in terms of the long run, the character that had the most overall impact on me was Sailor Neptune. And as a member of the LGBT community, I almost feel like it's irresponsible for me to not talk about the impact that she's had on my life. So I'm going to do that while I do these next steps. And although I'm a little sorry this couldn't be a complete tutorial video, it'll be a nice chit chat get ready with me video from here on in. Next step is to take a powder brush and then wipe off any excess and the excessive amount of powder that you put on your face earlier. For this, I'm using an Ego Tools Sheer Powder Brush. Now is the perfect time to go in with some bronzer. I'm going in with Benefit's Hula Bronzer. Note that I'm also using this as a contour shade. I'm bronzing up the sides of my face and focusing on cheekbone area. And then I'll go to my lower jawline as well. First doing a line like this, but also then blending it in so that it doesn't just look like a sharp line. Now, Sailor Neptune was one of those pivotal characters for me to let me realize that being who you are is okay and it's normal. So I was maybe like 12 or 13 when I discovered her. She had, I think, 
few years back been first featured on the show in Japan. They hadn't yet released S, which was this, the anime series that first featured her in America. So I was very resourceful at the time. Um, somehow got my mother's permission to use her credit card and order fan subs on VHS. And really what I discovered of her changed my life. So she is a character that is either lesbian or bi. <laughs> I cracked the finger. I am more on the fence that she is bi or pan. You see her with Sailor Uranus as lovers, but you also see her occasionally flirting with male characters too. And note for me that at the time that I discovered her, I was about 12 or 13 years old. I was, I was only a year out of the Catholic Church. By that time, we were no longer active in the Catholic Church, but I was very much raised Catholic with a sort of Catholic Sunday school level of education. So, so basically a lot of guilt and a lot of knowledge in what I could and couldn't do according to that doctrine. Now my family had stopped going to church because we had switched churches a few years before and we noticed that the priest was basically preaching hatred in there and preaching discriminatory things. And now that was the first straw. Then things kept happening in that church and we realized that it just wasn't right for us. It was a very big deal for my very Irish Catholic family. Now, when I was young, I expected to grow up, get married, and basically be domestic. I knew that I was going to have a job and a career, but that was kind of the gist. I really thought that I would be finding a husband. <laughs> this is so weird to do this while talking about what products I'm using. I'm going to blend that in with the same powder brush. And fast forward to discovering Sailor Neptune's character. At first, when I discovered that she was essentially in a lesbian relationship, I didn't know what to think because I had been really trained to think a certain way. I wouldn't necessarily say that my family was discriminatory whatsoever. My mom, for instance, definitely was super, super accepting and welcoming of the gay community, but I still think that they had the same expectation that I would, that I would grow up dating guys and eventually getting married. Next step after this is to go in with some powder and really diffuse the bronze look on your face. I'm using the MAC Studio Fix Powder in the shade NC10. And as always, just use the shade that works right for your skin tone. At first I had a reaction. I was, I was actually sad when I found out. But it only took me a day. And then after that day I really thought about it and I'm like, you know what? It's really cool that they have characters like this. And then after that day, I had a discovery about myself as well. I'm actually gonna go in again with the Hula bronzer and then bronze up around my nose and in the inner part of my cheeks, just to give it kind of a youthful look. And after that day, I had a revelation. Like when I was sitting in bed and I was severely depressed at that point, actually. Like I was very, very deeply depressed. You know, I think I was 13 at that point and I like, didn't really have much of a will to live to be honest and I had a revelation that same night that one of my best friends I actually really liked her and not in a just best friend sort of way but I liked her and that revelation saved my life and it gave me a will to live because I realized that I was different just like Sailor Neptune was and I could accept that side of myself after watching that series, I gotta say, Western lesbian films and shows were super, super behind by that point. We had But I'm a Cheerleader, which was super cute and campy, but most of the films with adult lesbian women and couples had to do with all the hardships you had to go through and usually ended super, super tragically. Now things are so much better now than they were before. We have wonderful movies like Carol and Portrait of a Lady on Fire, which have, I'd say bittersweet endings, but really more sweet than bitter. So it's a step in the right direction. But looking at Sailor Neptune's relationship with Sailor Uranus, them being just outright together, it's super, super obvious. It was super unfortunate that they tried to censor that really, really Really deeply for the American media. I know that the current dub has corrected that, which is awesome and I apply that localization team so so much for doing that good work and then really bringing that relationship to light. 
Seeing that lesbian relationship on a show that was really geared toward teens, young adults, and children really did change my life because what I saw was a healthy lesbian relationship that, yeah, they had a few tragedies and yes, they were morally gray, but I thought that that made them so much more interesting. Seeing that really let me know that it's just okay to be who I am. It's normal. It doesn't necessarily have to be a big struggle within you to know who you are and to seek the sort of relationships, friendships, and people that will really accept you. That is so, so important. So having that in my life at the time where I was just starting to really figure myself out was absolutely pivotal. And that's why I will pick Sailor Neptune over Sailor Moon anytime in terms of some sort of a cosplay look or something that I would like to talk about because she had such a deep impact and I hope that she is still able to do that for younger kids and teens today. So I've reached the last steps. Thank you so much for listening to my story. The rest will be in more tutorial mode, but I really had to get that out. I think that it's really important for me to share that with you. And if you happen to be young and watching this or just figuring yourself out too, just like that, feel free to give Sailor Moon a watch or even uh, Revolutionary Girl Utena a watch, which is another one of my absolute favorites. Utena especially has more of that subtext and it's not as in your face as with Sailor Moon, but I personally found that super helpful as I was kind of transitioning into becoming more of who I am today. And I'm so grateful that now we have shows and movies that feature women's relationships with other women so outright and so obviously. They have been treating it really well lately and I am beyond grateful for that. So unlike a lot of other looks, I'm actually gonna apply blush for this step. I know, shocker, but it'll go with the whole pink look here. I'm going in with the Anastasia Beverly Hills blush trio called Pool Party. Now these have a lot of really, really light shades, and if your skin tone happens to be deeper, you might want to pick a different palette, but this is the one that happens to work for me. I'm going in with that center pink shade, and I'm just applying that to the apples of my cheeks above where I applied that bronzer. And because I just went in with a lot, I'm actually going to join it in with some of my eye makeup to make it look like that was intentional and I'll go ahead and diffuse that with the Eco Tools powder brush. Now one of the last steps will be highlight. Now I was very much on the fence as to whether or not I wanted to use a blue highlight for this, but because this look is, I mean, it's not, it's not natural, let's just admit it's not natural. I wanted a highlight to, to be a little more understated than it was overstated. So I'm going to go in with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Amrezy um, highlighter. And I'm applying that to my cheekbones and to the side of my face. I just tap this to the tune of Down With The Sickness. Ignore me. Um, I'm also going to apply a little bit to the tip of my nose and to my cupid's bow. I'm also going to add a little bit of setting spray. I'm going in to the T-zone of my face with the MAC Fix Plus Gold Light, and then to the outer edges, I'm going in with the Urban Decay All Nighter, which has more of a natural finish. Now I realized that I forgot my last layer of mascara, which is actually perfect because so much of the time the setting spray actually makes my mascara go everywhere. So a lot of the time I like to do my setting spray first and then mascara. So I'm just gonna go in and add another light coat to both my lashes and false lashes to sort of blend them in together. And the last step is the lips. Now I'm going in with a few different colors. I really love in her transformation sequence that the final step is her getting this beautiful pink lip gloss. Now you can go in with pink lip gloss if you like, but I'm actually going in with a multi-step approach. First, if you chapped, use your chapstick. This one is just the Burt's Bees Beeswax Lip Balm. It is my favorite chapstick ever. I apply it like 40 times a day. Next, I'm going in with a lipstick. This one is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dead Roses Matte Lipstick. Because this is so dark, it's a lot darker than the lip gloss that she uses, I'm just going to blot it out. And then I'm going in with a clear lip gloss. This one is by Pixie by Petra. It's a clear lip gloss. The shade is called Petal Ice. Now the only thing to do is to slip on the wig, and I'll see you in the final look.
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Are you planning any costumes this year for Halloween or a photo shoot? Although it's definitely a year to either go outside and be amongst nature or just stay in and marathon spooky or Halloween movies, there's definitely a reason to dress up and have fun. I'd really love to know myself so that I can live vicariously through you. As for me, my plan is to stay in and watch some witchy movies. I hope you all have a great night or day wherever you are. Stay safe and be good to each other, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Now that my spots are most, oh no. Sip of my... Oh god, I got my plant in my ceiling too, but tea is plants, right? Oh, this tea is so good. I swear, at least once in every makeup video, I think that I've lost something and it's like right in front of me. There we go. Oh my god, is that it? Is that it? Oh my god. And that's Sailor Neptune from Jojo Kakumai Sailor Moon. <laughs> I hope you all have a great night or date where it, have night or date. Night or date. Mm -hmm. I hope you do have a great night or date. I don't have my chin strap. <laughs> I gotta tell you, Elena's needs her strap. <laughs>